So Canada Rye. Let's move through here. I've seen him before. Road surface looks terrible. Uh, no stop sign or yield for him. Okay. That person's supposed to stop and yield. It's, it's a typical situation. Handled it well. Was able to break. Rev bombed when he was in safe position. I would do the same thing. Kind of moving on. Uh, Eduardo Garza can't see nothing. Oh, now we can. Uh, somebody got hit hard. So this is definitely going to be one of those rescue situations. Uh, remain calm. That's not going to help uh, unless you want to just grab their license. But um, my main concern is human life at that point. So I'm going to go over there with my tourniquet, my rescue pack. I'm going to see if there's any, any major bleeds. Let's go ahead and put that back up. Any major bleeds. Um, and make sure we can stop it so they can possibly survive. Let's take a look. So this is our buddy right here or whoever. Possibly. So this guy sees it in the 360 situation awareness, sees the lights in his left mirror. So this kind of lets you know that somebody's coming up. And, oh, that's not the buddy that got hit. There's a different buddy. You can kind of see him. Where's his? Okay, so he's he does have a tail light. This person behind wasn't paying attention, did impact him. And this is why we're smart riders, okay? We're going to acquire and use personal protective equipment and then rescue injured motorcyclists if we can. So that's one of the big things. So we're going to move off into there. So now he's kind of sitting on the ground. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, this is where we have that rescue pack, and it comes with a rescue booklet. So then you're able to follow along, uh, research that before going on a ride. But you do get a rescue card. It fits in your wallet. This is what it looks like on the front. And this is what it looks like on the back. It gives you a little bit of information so you know what to do. Uh, so you're not standing there with your hands in your pockets or like, what do I do with my hands? And nobody calls 911. That's a bad thing. So yeah, grab a rescue booklet. Uh, it does come with the rescue packs and the rescue pouches. So you might want to check that out. All right, so we got another one right here. Let's see, ATL Moto. We got an, uh, a little merging issue. Let's go back just a little bit. So what we typically see with merging issues is that there's gonna be an open lane, okay? So open lane is gonna be off to the right where he's going, so there's that indicator. So the indicator is is definitely letting you know, hey, uh, I'm gonna be moving into there. And so at this point, yes, we've committed with our throttle. You know, we're going at a pretty decent speed. We committed to do this, but we are still pretty far away. And that is pretty far away. These things are about 20 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet. I think it continues, but uh, so we got it like, you know, for at least 40 feet away. Uh, at this point, you can roll off your throttle. Uh, that's going to do some engine braking, and that's going to allow you to slow down, and that's very important, especially in a situation like this. You don't want to slam the brakes. That's when you go into brown stage. You're, you're not prepped. You're just kind of panicked. Boom, brown stage. If you don't know what we're talking about here, this is the uh, white, yellow, orange, red, and brown stages that uh, we do have up on the board over there, up on the wall. So if you have any issues, go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the wall and grab yourself a slice of pizza. But yeah. You want to make sure that you are not uh, uh, zoned out. You want to be in yellow stage. In this situation, I see the indicator. Uh, I see that it's an open lane. I want to be in that lane for the same exact reasons. I see this is the situation. I'm going to roll up the throttle. Engine braking is going to slow me down, especially at highway speeds, and it's going to be a non-issue. But we're going to come up to here where it becomes an issue. So we got into that spot and got uh, pushed out of the way. Okay, so there was a merging issue. Could have been dangerous. Uh, the main thing here is that we put ourselves in a position for safety. We have to locate these hazardous situations and assess if this person over here is a relevant threat. That's one of the big things here. So we're positioning for safety. Not really. Not not now. We need to uh, locate hazardous situations. This is a hazardous situation. That is the exact pattern that we always, 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 always look out for. And then right here, we have to assess if this is a relevant threat. Let's put that back up. We need to assess it if it is. They're crossing that line. Now they became uh, an active threat. We have to do something. We're going to jump into orange stage. We need to uh, do an emergency move. We need to swerve to the right, move to the right, whatever it is. And sometimes all it is is a really quick adaptation. Not really an emergency. It can be. It's, it's instigated by an emergency. But we're kind of like right here. We can merge over here and then continue accelerating to get out of the way. One of the big problems, though, is that when we accelerate to get ourselves out of the way, any of these people can come in, and now we're at a higher rate of speed, and now we have another situation. But that, that's a problem for future Daniel. Uh, right now, we got to get ourselves out of the situation. What I like to do and what I like to teach here at uh, Dan and the Fireman and Motorcycle Training Concepts, our training organization, is get ourselves 
out of that position in the first place. Let's not put ourselves there. Okay, we see the indicator. We, we need to be more aware. We understand. We want to do it too. Allow them to do it. Be a little bit more patient. When they get into that lane, it's not going to be a big deal. And you get behind them and just follow them. You were already following them. Follow them here. You don't need to pass. Once you get to this situation, now you have to start using a lot of your fundamental skills. You got to start, you know, swerving and braking, engine brake and progressive braking, all these different things to get escape pass, get yourself out of here. I'd rather just kind of sit back. I'd rather sit back. So what are you doing? if you agree with that kind of sentiment, follow Motorcycle Training Concepts YouTube channel. We're posting more. We got 30,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can hit 50 by the end of the year. All right, here we go. Uh, kind of the same thing where we're not anticipating. Let's go. He didn't see me. Okay. I was going to say he's going to do his own after action. I'm used to it by now. Funny, I didn't even get startled by that. I'm just used to it. Okay, so there's two things there that I want to talk about. Okay, two things there. One of them is complacency. Uh, another is, uh, well, desensitizing himself to that. So we're getting up to here. There's the indicator. What are we currently trying to do ourselves? We don't like the speed that the flow of traffic is going. We found a small gap, but we have to basically cut off the Nissan here to make it into that gap, kind of freak them out a little bit. And then this person's going to go ahead and merge in a, in a very legal way. You know, there's no one getting cut off. Like there's a big gap right here. So they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, not anticipating a motorcycle to go this fast up behind them and then cut through there. So we're not being presentable. We're not being predictable. We are just kind of going with the flow or not, not even going with the flow. We're going at the speed that we want. So impatience, um, the feeling of ownership of uh, what I want to do. So there's a lot of ego, a lot of ego involved here. Thankfully, he didn't get pissed, but there's a lot of ego that's driving this type of riding when you should understand, hey, everyone else is the main character in their own lives. They're all doing their own thing. They're all trying to figure things out. Where do you fit in this? Orient yourself to the situation. And we're not doing that here. We're going to go ahead and cut through here at a high rate of speed. And now we're getting cut off by an Acura and we kind of get pissed. But the good thing here that he did was not panic. So we got cut off. So if we just assume like this is this situation here, instead of us cutting people off, now we're kind of uh, playing defensive mode and, and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. All of a sudden, this person cuts us off. He did exactly what you're supposed to do and swerve out of the way. That's it. Accelerate and swerve. And then his uh, explanation here, let's listen to it one more time. Yeah, he didn't see me. I'm used to it by now. It's funny, I didn't even get startled by that. I'm just used to it. So a little bit desensitized to the type of traffic that he always rides in. This happens all the time. Okay, so we're picking out some of the words. We're actively listening here. And uh, it just doesn't bother me more. So you can get desensitized to scary and traumatic events. You can get de your body kind of gets used to it. It doesn't get that adrenaline dump anymore. Um, I've heard a story recently where there's people in Ukraine that, you know, uh, the first bomb that hit massive, like, oh, freak out trauma response, like fight or flight. Second one. Yeah. Third, hundredth. Yeah, not not really. It's a normal day. Their uncle died. Yeah, but it's overall is a good day. You start to get desensitized. That doesn't mean that it's supposed to happen that way. You either get yourself out of that situation or you fight back. At the end of the day, uh, make sure that we're hyper-focused on planning our ride. It's very important that we position ourselves for safety in the first place and locate these hazards so we're not desensitizing ourselves to dangerous things and then just kind of accepting uh, that's the that's life. It really isn't motorcycling should be enjoyable and then having that adrenal dump it's not if you want to support this channel support the training that we're doing here join up on the mtc rider academy and become a member and you get a ton of different things we get the basic training course smart rider drills the podcast early smart rider tips an archive of the crash reviews because they do get taken down and ad restricted on youtube and the mtc library which you're going to be able to download the rescue booklet the smart rider basic training book and a bunch of other stuff and it's only $4.99 the first month. So join up, help support the channel, but let's go ahead and get right back into it. All right, here we go. Moving on with this. And we are filming. Are we on a track? Seems like, no, we're not on a track. Oh, ah, face first. Hopefully he has a full face helmet. I don't know if he does. 
There we are. Very good. He's walking. Is he a walking wounded? No limp. Oh, no. The other guy's on the ground. Oh. So that wasn't the guy. With, okay. So we're uh, doing some crazy stuff. Seems like it's a pretty open area. This is probably a good way to practice, but then we weren't paying attention because once we landed, you know, this is where people get to film. So it's a fun little spot. But once we landed, we're going too fast. We don't have good total stopping distance. This is the moment he's perceived and reacted to do some progressive braking and a little bit too fast. So we should have found that escape, maybe did that uh, roundabout right there, but we were going straight for the median. There's the impact. There's nothing we're going to do at this point. We lose all control. We're going up and over because what happened is he hits the, the front. It launches it up, but then once it hits the back, it does this. So he's going to have this ejection, and that's what's happening here. He's being ejected. He's going face first. It's not good. That's why you lift your butt up when you go over a bump, blip the throttle, lift this up, lift your butt up so you can absorb some of these things. But at this speed... Uh, this is what's going to happen. And there's the face into it. So we're talking spinal injuries, facial trauma, traumatic brain injuries, uh, arm injuries, uh, rib cage, so skeletal system. A lot of this musculoskeletal system is going to be damaged and then possibly organs. So we don't know any more from this, but it's funny. He's like doing a selfie. Um, if he's sitting there kind of staggered, okay, remember we're looking for head injury symptoms. Is he disoriented? Does he have nausea? Uh, can he see straight? Um, does he have any sensation loss in his legs or anything like that? He, all of a sudden, he starts to look like pale. And then he's just starting to be drenched like he just came out of a shower. It's called diaphoresis. And it, that means he's got really profuse sweating. That's not good. Okay, so he's starting to go into more of a shock, maybe neurogenic shock. And if he has any major bleeds, you want to get that rescue pack and get some tourniquets on. You want to get some wound packing. You want to, you know, help him out here. Help him out here so he doesn't bleed to death. But yeah, I'm always worried about that. One of the main things here we can all do if we're all bystanders here is remain calm, ensure our own safety so we don't get hit by another person doing these things. Stop major bleeds and then assess the uh, severity. <laughs> but yeah, grab the, the rescue book. They also have Zillow gear right there. All right. Okay, oh, kind of the same situation. Everyone's gonna duck out of the way. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. Okay, so now it's just a close call. It's not a crash. Was able to find the escape path and uh, kept it up. But you want to make sure you have gloves, okay? So have some gloves. You don't want to rip up your hands. That's no fun. So we're going to do a power wheelie. Lost a little control, I think. A little bit, a little off to the right, a little off to the side. Eyes are not protected. Imagine getting a bug in your eye right there. Wear some glasses at least. And uh, boom, we landed. Okay, now we're going too fast. We're going 114. We're going to go and reach for those front brakes. We're going to try our best to do some progressive brake pressure. We teach this in our uh, MTC Rider Academy right now. You might want to check it out. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get up to here. And now everyone's like, oh, no, he's not stopping in time. We are going zero, though. But uh, we're not going to be able to stop in time. Everyone's going to dodge out of the way. Thankfully, nobody got hit because that's very dangerous. And now we're at this point where we're trying to keep it up. We're on loose gravel. We are slipping and sliding. We're still applying a little bit of brakes here and there. We know uh, that we shouldn't be slamming it when we're on gravel because we'll just dump the bike. Uh, that's no fun. Oof. Yeah. 